Leroy Smith of Oklahoma State in the black tights faces Andre Metzger of Oklahoma. This documentary is the story about an ordinary family from Dell City, Oklahoma, that achieved extraordinary success. It is a story about a mother and father who raised 10 children to be responsible adults. It is a story about how four brothers would raise the bar of success for one another and how they set standards of excellence in the sport of wrestling that few can equal in any sport. This is their story. What it was like being a mother of 10 children, I can't even put it into words. Very hectic. Little chaotic. It was total chaos. Chaos. It was chaos. <laughs> we were always uh, going one way or another. Extremely noisy. It was tiring. The door was constantly being open and shut. Activities started at five o'clock and we were all running and gunning until about 10 in the evening. Extremely crowded. A lot of um, fighting. We blew Dr. Spock's mind. But now I realize that there was a lot of love and a lot of bonding that went on. We were very close and we took care of one another. I wouldn't replace it for anything in the world. Great, wonderful experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But it was a lot of fun and I wouldn't change it for anything. It was the most joyful experience I ever had. <laughs> Every year it ends up like this. I think I have it organized. It's chaos. It's chaos. Madeline Smith, the matriarch of the family, raised 10 children and has worked and continues to work as an OBGYN nurse for over 57 years. She is affectionately known as Go Go Granny. <laughs> she has more energy than any three people I know. If you try to keep up with Madeline, it just wears you out. My mother is a good woman. She's a caretaker. Very special. Always made you feel welcome in their home. Um, worked nights for years when we were younger so that she could be home with us during the day, which meant she got very little sleep. She got an average of maybe four hours sleep a day. I would get up in the mornings because she worked nights. She'd be asleep in the car. This is the first time I've sat down in 10 years. She's a very competitive person. Now my mom is ultra competitive. She was just very supportive of, of us, you know, in our sports and, and, and everything else we did in life. She never went to wrestling matches and, and watched us wrestle. It drove her crazy. She used to never like to watch the boys wrestle because she got too nervous. I said, Mom, you've got to watch one of my matches. And she wouldn't watch it. You know, she never watched John wrestle. She would go to the bathroom. I guess she'd say her rosary. Or going to the bathroom and saying the rosary, you know, it didn't hurt, had to help. Mom gave us that faith. Obviously our faith. Gave each and every one of us was our faith. That type of faith and that type of strength that, that really gets you through life and certainly got her through life. Christ our Lord, amen. She's probably the, uh, the greatest woman I've ever known. I definitely think we've been guided by God. Leroy Smith Jr., the patriarch of the Smith family, was not only the disciplinarian of the household, but also taught his children about love, being supportive toward one another, and about being a true example of commitment, stability, and hard work. My dad was definitely authoritarian. He was the authoritative f figure in our, our life. Leroy was a disciplinarian. Especially raising 10 kids, 10 honorary kids. I was the one that handled all the discipline. He was a lot of fun. Tough but soft. A very loving, gentle man. Always there for you. Gave a great sense of security when things went wrong. My dad was always just a very strong uh, support system for us. Uh, had a lot of wisdom and um, really kept us grounded. He was very supportive of, the, of his family and his sons that wrestled and uh, always had an encouraging word. He was uh, always there. 
My father would have been a great coach. When I look at the way he treated me growing up, when it came to uh, athletics, um, that's what I want to do with my boys. And he's, he has a ton of love. He's really been the rock of our family. Win or lose, let's go get some ice cream. And that's, that's the way my dad was. I am truly a blessed person. The Smith family grew up in a quaint two-story home in Dell City, Oklahoma, and quickly became very popular amongst their neighbors. Well, Dell City is just a wonderful little community, a suburb outside of Oklahoma City. The neighbors thought we were crazy. We, we really had great neighbors. This man over here next door, Mr. Toole, we pretty much tortured him and made him a nervous wreck 24-7. We probably, probably didn't have much territorial respect for other people's property. We drove through his yard with a car one time, and you know, the ball's probably going into their yard. Kids everywhere and cars coming in and out. We were always in the streets. We rode bikes all over the place without our little bike helmets and, you know, barefoot. The music blaring out of the upstairs windows while we laid out in the backyard. You know, we were always getting in trouble trespassing. Just playing constantly in the neighbor's yards. You know, we had no boundaries on where we could play. We did what kids did back then. We played outside. But now, I, you know, they come by the house and they visit with my parents and uh, we see them, you know, during holidays and stuff and they start reminiscing and, and, and telling stories about, you know, when we were young children. And the ones that still live there come out you know when we're home for the holidays and I think look forward to seeing the kids and seeing the grandkids and just kind of sit on the porch and watch us. And they all act like you know it was the greatest thing in the world now that we're all gone. What was life like in the Smith home? Just your typical ordinary American family. You know we, we watched TV in those days and you'd like to go out and mimic what you saw and I think there was uh, there, uh, Daniel Boone or Davy Crock Crockett uh, uh, episodes that I was watching where he'd throw the hatchet and split the tree. And My dad had just bought a new TV and the styrofoam stuff that was inside the TV, Leroy put that styrofoam behind my back and so that when he tossed the forks it, it would at least stick in the, in the cardboard and not the walls or it would stick in Rita. I asked my sister to stand on a couch. Uh, he put the styrofoam behind my head and uh, pitched forks, yes, all the way around my head. You know, and I had no intention of throwing a, the fork at her and hitting her. I just wanted to come close. And she agreed to it. And now he, he forced me to do this. He got the big three-pronged salad fork and it hit me right here. But it went right into her forehead and stuck. Didn't do a lot of damage, but she was stupid enough to sit there and let him do it. Of course, she had to be taken to the to the emergency to make sure there was no infection. It did not cut me to where I had to get stitches. I had to wait for the consequences when my dad got home. I think one of the funniest stories is my youngest brother, Mark, who um, would watch Western shows and, um, you know, those slip cut, those covers that you had over couches and stuff. He cut holes in, uh, in four of them and then put a string on and had no underwear on and he was an Indian. I actually used to strap them around me, you know, bare naked <laughs> and run through the house like an Indian. Well, I don't know who convinced John he could fly. I don't know why I thought I could fly. But the funniest story I have about John is uh, when we told him that he could fly. I think he'd dive off the house. So he tried to fly out the window upstairs. And uh, being the athlete he is, he tumbled uh, quite gracefully and did not break any bones. I went from a two-story house off with a cape on one time and realized, uh, you know, it was, I blamed it on the cape rather than th that I couldn't fly. I, I think he was at the top of the stairs one time and tried to fly from the top of the stairs down to the bottom of them. And I remember the next day, and I'm, now, you know, he probably broke his nose, I don't know, but he had the black eyes right here. In my youth years, is a little bit blurry to me. Probably because I hit my head a few times, uh, not in wrestling, but, but trying to fly. I mean, that was just everyday life in the Smith house. What I recall most was 
having five sisters before I had another brother. The middle child is the most stable, and that is me. <laughs> My sisters are wild, crazy, loud, everything all wrapped up in one. I think Pat they did, they did dress up like a girl a few times, which I think as a kid he looked a little bit like a girl. <laughs> I think the only jealousy might have been that Leroy and John and Pat couldn't whip the girls. The girls were just going to probably be tougher than the guys. They would have wrestling matches, tournaments in the living room, and the girls would win. Kathy could wrestle with them and beat them most of the time. We had some brawls, Leroy and I did. <laughs> Leroy is two years older than I am. I always seem to have the Oreo cookies in my hands to um, uh, antagonize him a little bit. And I took my Oreo cookie and I opened it up and I showed him the um, cream inside the Oreo cookie and then I won't tell you the rest of the story, but I stopped doing that to him. The Smith family had a lot of fun growing up, but there were a few hard times as well. There, there, there was hard times, you know, and money was tight. Lots of fighting over clothes. There would be like three or four of us that were the same size, so we would get something that would be shared. Monday it was my day to wear it, Thursday it was Kathy's day to wear it. And then I, I started working when I was 15, and I would buy my own clothes and have to buy a lock for my door to keep them out of it. I remember I had a lock on my closet door upstairs, and my sisters literally chiseled it one day, one of my sisters. Yeah, to get, to get into it and get into my clothes. And I shared a room with Kathy. Well, Kathy didn't like it because I wouldn't pick my stuff up off the floor, so she threw all my clothes out the upstairs window. Now, combs were hard to find here in the Smith House. I remember one morning, and this is no lie, I used a fork to brush out my hair. <laughs> um, they had one car to drive to school, and they all piled in that, and they thought like cats and dogs who was gonna drive. Siblings were in line to get those showers early so we didn't run out of hot water. And Finding socks and underwear and, um, hoping that you got some socks and some underwear. and That, you know, you put that food out there on the table, you better get in there quick, or there wasn't going to be any left by the time you got in there. The only time I remember a child being left behind was uh, Mary Ann when we got down to the ballpark. My dad um, refereed in the summer times. I babysit a lot for my mom, and for some reason I thought my mom had Mary Ann with her, and my mom thought I was at the house with Mary Ann. So when I ended up in the stands, my mom looked at me and said, where's Mary Ann? And I said, well, I thought she was with you. So we kind of darted out of the ballpark and got home and Missy's just standing in the baby bed, you know, chattering away. My mom may kill me for saying this, but I do remember one time I got, I think she left me about 15 minutes there at the uh, supermarket. <laughs> She, she forgot she took me, took me in there. I remember Chuck and I, my husband, when we got married, um, they put Mark and Pat in our trunk. So when we took off from this house to go on our honeymoon, Mark and Pat were in the back in the trunk of my car. <laughs> we were camping right there on the side of a river, and Madeline says, Leroy, where's, Leroy? where's little Leroy? I said, I don't know, mother, he's all right. He says, well, I haven't seen him in about 10 or 15 minutes. Where do you think he is? And I looked out there in the middle of the North Platte River, and he's on a big old log, and that river's fast. And he's shooting down that river on a log. And I said, there he is, mother. And she started screaming. <laughs> Leroy Smith III, the second oldest of 10 children, was the spark in a family of wrestlers that became legendary. No one knew then what a tradition of outstanding wrestling he would pioneer. The Smith family is just the, almost the first family of the sport. Leroy was our first son to wrestle. My, my first exposure and experience to the sport of wrestling, I had a couple of neighbors. We were all at, attended this elementary school, Epperly Heights in Dell City, and they had a wrestling program. And they'd kind of watched and observed that I was uh, somewhat of a uh, athletic, uh, physical type, uh, uh, always scuffling with my sisters. During recess, we would leg wrestle on the monkey bars, and I was, I was pretty good at it. And uh, uh, the coach noticed me. But one day, all of a sudden, they, I get surrounded by the wrestling team, and they had offered me an opportunity to go a takedown. 
since I was very nervous and, and uh, took him down. And Leroy came home from school in the third or fourth grade and was caught wrestling out on the playground at Everly Heights by a, a coach. And they recruited him to wrestle and that's how it all started. I went home to mom and dad and said, look, uh, I, I think I'd be interested in going out for wrestling. He came home one day from school and he said, I want to wrestle. And I said, well, okay, what is wrestling? When he was in high school, he was number one recruit in the nation to go to college. I had made a couple of world teams each year prior to the Olympics. Won the silver medal the year in 1983, the year before um, the Olympics, and uh, was a favorite. Of course, John was always looking up to Leroy and wanted to do the same thing he did because he was quite successful. I had a lot of fear that if I didn't train hard, if I didn't stay focused, if I didn't continue to do the things that it takes to be a, you know, the world's best wrestler, it, it could disappear like that. Well, I've got involved in wrestling uh, with my two older brothers. Um, and basically, um, I saw in 1976 was Leroy's, I believe, freshman year at Oklahoma State. And I went up there and saw a match at Oklahoma State. And I saw Leroy wrestle. And I knew right then and there that's what I wanted to do. One, yeah, I won three high school state championships, uh, was second as a freshman, uh, was voted by the uh, Daily Oklahoman as the uh, high school wrestler of the, the century, uh, which was you know, quite an accomplishment, and won several uh, freestyle national championships in high school. Uh, was a three-time All-American here at Oklahoma State, and three-time Big 12 champion, and, and uh, you know, so I accomplished quite a bit. And I won three uh, state titles in high school and then went on to college and, and won four NCAA titles. Five seconds to go, third period. Pat Smith is five seconds away from becoming the first Division I wrestler to win four NCAA titles. Two, one, and that's, that's going to do it, is history. They amazed me because, you know, in wrestling you see guys with incredible builds and, and strength and stuff, and they were just normal guys who were great at it. It was obvious to me they were just driven athletes who willed themselves to the top of, you know, this sport. And then in mid-July of 1984. I remember the day that my dad got the call. <laughs> it makes me get teary-eyed to think about it. It was probably the most helpless I've ever seen my dad feel, and that was sad. Unbelievably shattering to all, of, you know, for all of us. Leroy was in the Olympic trials. Leroy told my dad that he was removed from the team. Uh, it, it was a shock because we'd already had our motels and we already had our arrangements made to go. The family was all going because it was here in the United States that year. It was a very heartbreaking. Um, time to see someone that worked so hard for his dreams and for it to be taken away like the way it was taken away. He did say to me, this is not going to make me bitter. I had uh, wrestled in the final Olympic trials and had uh, encountered uh, Randy Lewis uh, in, in one of the rounds. Randy Lewis beat Leroy in the match protested a call during the match, which they had some protest procedures, and had won the protest, and then won the, the, the wrestle-off that they required, uh, that the protest committee required. They did that, and Leroy picked up points, and Randy lost some points. So they declared Leroy the winner. Won the trials, was on the Olympic team at that time, Randy Lewis had the right to file a petition with an arbitrator. So they filed with a federal arbitrator. They won. Now we had one choice, either accept the arbitrator or file in federal court. So we did file in federal court. And the judge ruled um, in his favor which ultimately led to him being on the Olympic team. I think once 
he was put on the team, which he was, it was his spot. It should not have been taken away. I just felt like that was probably a little bit of a, a disjustice. I thought Leroy probably deserved to go. And um, he handled that very well as, um, for what had happened to him. But it was sad to see Leroy lose his dreams and what he trained so hard for and worked so hard for, and he did everything right. It, it still to this day hurts us. And I can understand, I don't like to talk about it. And, and people ask me all the time, what happened and it's just like oh that is the last thing I want to talk about. Leroy really never talked about it. Um, you could see the hurt in his face. I didn't want to talk about it. I, I wanted to uh, um, you know focus on the future. He amazed me even during that period of time because I remember he came home from from the trials and he uh, he says I'm okay. It's all, uh, it's all right mom you know probably more upset for my parents you know it was such a it was such a family effort to get there you know want to uh, be the best in the world um, uh, out of a motivation for for family members or for God so you know to be able to have that stage is just a, a, a great reward. For me, uh, it was very personal, you know, it was, it, it hurt. Uh, probably harder on my mom and my parents than me. Uh, when I think about them, pretty hard on everybody. His pain was our pain. My hero growing up, I mean, I'll never forget the day he left and went to college. I just cried. I think what I appreciate about Leroy more than anything is that, you know, as time passed pretty quickly, you know, he moved on quickly. Um, wasn't going to let it be devastating to him. And it's through those adversities that make you who you are. And the one thing that was most impressive is from that day that he got um, basically his dreams swiped away from him. I, I have never heard him complain. Leroy is a fantastic uh, man and a great coach. And, um, you know, there's other things that define him other than that one event. Probably taught me more. Um, by not making it than had he had made it and won an Olympic gold medal. Uh, you're on the team, you get the plaque for uh, being on the team and, and, and uh, then, you know, with, with some court decisions, you're, you're stripped of that. And Randy represented the United States in the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. There's a lot of people that were involved in it that are probably very sorry that it took place and the way it happened. You know, things kind of lay out sometimes um, in situations and, and sometimes we regret the things that we do and say and get involved in. And I, I think all of those individuals have kind of paid the price uh, in criticism for what took place. It taught me a lot um, about uh, letting go, I think, of you know, things that really don't matter. One great mentor of mine would tell me, you know, if that's the worst thing that happened to you in life, you're a very lucky person. I know when you walk off a mat as the champion, you're the champion. And We all went to the lake and spent that week of, you know, the Olympics on Table Rock Lake. The Smiths went on a trip to Missouri. <laughs> After my 84 experience, that that pain and that, that torch passing of family heritage and wrestling was being passed on to John. And he struggled a little bit with it because he was still trying to find his way. You know, he, he was still my brother. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that, that uh, you know, it wasn't just about me, but, but kind of putting that memory um, behind us by winning something. And for that, for us, it was, and for me, it was about winning the gold medal. John Smith was going to beat Brandy Lewis the next time he wrestled him, come hell or high water. 
he obviously had visualized this for a while. It just didn't happen. He would wake up in the middle of the night and instead of just you know going in and watching TV or reading a book, John would put on his workout clothes, go over to Gallagher Iba Arena and work out. He said, we're gonna go work out. And I said, well, what time? And he said, at midnight. And I thought to myself, midnight? Why are we gonna go wrestle at midnight? He says, because my opponents are sleeping. And uh, I thought, man, this guy knows how to get the edge. He'd get up at six o'clock in the morning and have my husband take him on the lake and, and ski for hours just to get a workout in. One of the biggest reasons I, I did have the success I had is because I outworked every one of my opponents. I do believe that. I don't think any of them put the time, the energy, or the effort into their sport like I did. A lot of that was driven from, from Leroy not being able to have that. You know, this is why this guy's a six-time world champ. This is why this guy's a two-time Olympic champion, because he finds ways to get the edge. I just started developing some, some habits and good habits of, of raising my passion up and, and then fulfilling that passion through, through hard, difficult things. Whether it be coming in at midnight and running until one o'clock to getting, coming in at three in the morning, thinking about what time the, the Russians get up in the morning to train or thinking about what time, you know, that they work out and while they're sleeping, I'm training. Just anything that just kind of can lift you to another level. Someone said one time, I, I'm not going to say who said it, but said John made the Olympic team because what happened to Leroy. The greatest victory was when John beat Randy Lewis off the Olympic team. Now the Olympics were huge. Watching John win the Olympics was just absolutely um, exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the United States of America. I think any time you, you, uh, you're trying to excel at those type of levels, whether it be sports, business, whatever, uh, I don't think you can accomplish uh, feats of winning Olympic gold medals if it was just for yourself. Um, and then just fall into his knees and knowing that he was saying, thank you, God, you know, thank you, God. Um, he just completed his dream. But he also completed his brother's dream. And I think that was, you know, that's, that's what we all felt. Thinking at the time, you know, I'm gonna do this for my brother, not only for myself, but for my brother and my parents. So, he did it. It was for Leroy, but also for my mom and dad, and for my brothers and sisters, and. Uh, so, uh, didn't get it, but had a brother that got it and got it done in a big way. This tradition continued with John, Pat, and Mark and includes seven individual NCAA championships and a host of international wrestling honors among himself and his three younger brothers. John, a two-time Olympic gold medalist who is currently the head coach at Oklahoma State. Pat, who was the first wrestler to ever win four NCAA titles. And Mark, who was a three-time All-American for OSU. I could say the best part of my life has been after my wrestling. Well, there's a, there's a move called the, the low single leg. And it's, um, it's a very famous move in the, in the world. And my brother John invented the low single leg. John always, always told me he, he was going to do something great. That, that to me was a turning point in my career because when I went out and wrestled turn matches, um, I noticed how easy my takedowns were because I was hitting a little single leg and nobody knew how to stop it. In fact, the Smith family was picked as the family of the decade by Amateur Wrestling News in 1999 for their accomplishments. I, I would say the thing that's made us successful wrestlers, I, I think we were all talented. And, and, but I think the number one thing is I think it's our competitiveness. 
Mark was probably the best high school wrestler of, of all the boys. He was a little bigger. The boys kept getting bigger. I think we had more food to put on the table as the family got, got, got reduced a little bit. One moment in my life that turned my career around was when I was a sophomore in high school. And um, I was at Junior Nationals, which is the high school national tournament as a sophomore. And I got beat out of the tournament. And I went two and two, and I was out of the tournament. Um, and I was up in, up in the um, Unidome in Iowa, Iowa and um, my father came up there and found me in the hallway. And when he found me, um, I was sitting there bawling. And he walked up to me, and I'll never forget these words. He looked at me and he said, someday that guy will say he beat Pat Smith. And I knew I was going to be a champion. And my value system and, and the things that I stand for is, is what really is what I learned during my time in Dell City. Uh, the 18 years I spent with him. It's not how many times you fall, it's how many times you get back up. And, and that's something I've learned. And uh, uh, learned it the hard way a few times, but you know, it's something that I, I've learned and you know, you've, uh, I try to instill in my kids. Work hard, work smart, and don't blame. Don't blame anybody but yourself. And we pretty well stuck all the way through our careers to that motto. And it served us very well. Uh, it's really a great time in our society to be a coach. So I really believe uh, that you truly are going to really make differences for student athletes today. Uh, Pat helped John coach Oklahoma State University for several years. And then he left Oklahoma State University and went to Arkansas. He went to work for a man named Greg Hatcher and help him start high school wrestling in the state of Arkansas. What makes the Smiths different is what's on the inside. And of course, it all starts with mom and dad. How do you raise 10 kids to turn out that successful? The more I see what a quality group of people they are from start to finish, the more I just gotta say, mom and dad deserve a lot of credit. He taught them there are no excuses that you have to work for something if you want it, that if you lost it's maybe because you just didn't put forth enough effort, that it's okay to lose. I, I do look up to big Leroy and what I'm trying to learn from Leroy is how to be a better dad because all the success that I've had in business or anything else I do won't be near as important as when they put me in the ground and were at my funeral if my five kids say, I had a dad who was there, who was the best dad I could have ever had. And I know when I go to that Smith funeral someday that it'll be unanimous 10 to zero, that they will all say I had the best dad I could have ever had. That's what I'm trying to learn from Leroy. The most important thing to them about the Smith family isn't, isn't what went on in that wrestling world. It's, it's how their children have grown up and how they're raising their children. They always made each one of those kids feel like each one of them was the most important one. But there's love and there's security. And at the end of the day, um, you, there isn't anything that you wouldn't do for, for one of your brothers and sisters. I appreciate my father taking me to tournaments weekend after weekend. Appreciate my mom making sure I had the, the things I needed to, to, um, to be successful. And there's a reason why we were successful. First of all, um, you know, we had great parents, very supporting parents, very supporting sisters. They were so committed to uh, their children. It really wasn't their life first, it was the family first. And through hard work and determination, and I think that I think that combination of what we brought to the family was what made the kids so strong in their beliefs. That to me is worth a million dollars. All the Olympics in the world can't take that. 
I think a lot of all the Smiths, uh, like I said, are just special, sweet people, uh, hardworking people, and a very appreciative people. And uh, I feel blessed to know them. But that's really who we are. We're a family of faith. You can throw that wrestling in there. But I wish you could interview all six girls at the same time. That would have been an interview. And the Smith family legacy continues.